Imagine spending hours creating the perfect productivity system, but only to find that you're still stuck and not getting things done. Frustrating, right? In our last two videos, we've built a strong foundation for your Notion GTD structure by capturing every commitment and organize it all. But without the final keystone, reflection, your productivity house won't stand the test of time. In this video, we'll transform your Notion setup from a static framework into a dynamic tool that propels you forward. Let's put a finishing touch on your system and start making things happen. Reflection is all about regularly reviewing your tasks and databases to make sure your actions, priorities, and goals stay in sync. This step is crucial for keeping a complete and balanced view of your commitments. Think of reflection like the keystone in an arch. It holds everything together and ensures stability. Regular reflection keeps your system current, robust, and effective, perfectly tailored to your needs. Reflection is not something you do occasionally when the mood strikes. It has a fixed schedule, daily, weekly, and monthly. Each serves a different purpose. In this video, we will dive into the Notion template and walk through each review, starting from the big picture goals down to your daily action planning. The purpose of the monthly review is to ensure your daily tasks and projects align with your long-term goals and values, helping you maintain a balanced perspective on all areas of life. This review follows the six levels of horizons, a vertical approach ranging from your daily actions to your life's purpose. You can find the My Horizons page under Quick Access where all six levels are listed. Each horizon includes a set of guiding questions to help you reflect on your progress and understand where you stand. During your monthly review, start from the highest level and work your way down, answering each question. This process ensures that your goals are up to date and your current actions align with your long-term vision. It also gives you a chance to step back from daily tasks and think about long-term planning, ensuring a holistic strategy. For high-level goals, I like to characterize them by areas of focus, such as family, finance, personal growth. For more ground-level activities, I recommend jumping back into the respective databases. So for example, when reviewing Horizon 1, I will go back to my project's database to ensure everything is fully mapped out. It's also helpful to keep tabs open for each database so you can easily toggle between them during your review. I schedule my monthly review on the last Sunday of each month, allowing enough uninterrupted time to go through all six levels. As I mentioned in a previous video, I also do a quick desk cleaning during my monthly review to keep everything tidy. The entire process typically takes less than an hour thanks to my weekly reviews that keep everything up to date. On these review days, I also do a quick daily review to cover the ground level actions, which we'll go over shortly. Here is a quote from the Getting Things Done book. The more complete the system is, the more you'll trust it. And the more you trust it, the more complete you'll be motivated to keep it. The weekly review is a master key to maintaining that standard. The weekly review is your opportunity to clear your mind, deal with everything that's piled up during the week, and to make sure your system is current and organized. I've mapped out the weekly review as a checklist under step three, reflect. We'll go through each database together. In our first video, we covered how to capture during system setup and daily use. And once again, your review starts with capturing. Capturing your thoughts right away ensures that nothing important slips through the cracks. I find going through the trigger list weekly equally helpful, not just for organization, but also for sparking new ideas. It's a great way to discover projects or tasks that inspire you. 
go through the trigger list weekly to capture anything that comes in mind, then move to the inbox to clarify and organize each item using the workflow we discussed in the second video. Next, we move to the core of the weekly review, going through each database to ensure that everything is in its proper place, well mapped and structured. I like to start with the waitlist, reviewing each item to see if anything is due for reconsideration. If an item needs to be moved to projects or next actions, do so. Or if it's no longer relevant, remove it. After updating the waitlist, let's move to the projects database to ensure each project is fully mapped out with the natural planning model and action items are added to next actions. So now next actions. This is when we plan for the upcoming week's tasks. I found that planning one week at a time offers just the right balance between foresight and control. Planning too far ahead can lead to overestimating your available time and underestimating task complexity, causing unnecessary stress, which is exactly what we are trying to avoid. Finally, review your calendar to ensure all appointments and events are accounted for and check reference items to make sure everything is up to date. I like to conduct my weekly reviews first thing on Friday mornings. It gives me a chance to reflect on the past week and recharge for the weekend. I plan my week starting on Saturday, which works well since as a full-time corporate employee, weekends are when I can spend time with family and work on my channel. The purpose of daily review is to plan your day and stay focused on immediate priorities. Daily reviews are the first things I do every morning. It typically just takes 10 to 15 minutes to go through my ground level tasks. First, process everything you captured yesterday by placing them in the appropriate databases. This is also the time to tackle any action items that take less than two minutes, as we discussed in the last video. If something cannot be done right away due to time or location, add it to the next actions list. Make sure to mark it as a quick task. Next, check your calendar to see what's on your schedule. Appointments, events, activities, adjust time slots as needed so you can plan your day around these time blocks. I like to expand my task database to full view when I'm deciding on what to tackle. When planning your day, there are four key things to consider. And first is priorities. What are the most important tasks for the day? These should align with your areas of focus and long-term goals. And second is location. Where will you be? If I'm in the office, I won't schedule anything that requires me to be home. And third, time estimate. Accurately estimating how long tasks will take is crucial. I've learned the hard way that underestimating time can lead to stress. So I take notes to better gauge time needed for similar tasks in the future. Lastly, energy level. For example, I'm most focused in the mornings, so I schedule work that requires deep focus early in the day and save easier tasks for later when it's harder to focus. To stay on track, start your immediate actions for the day, which lets you view them in a focused list without distractions. This also helps to double check that you haven't overloaded your day with too much work. If you have Notion Calendar on your mobile device, adding a widget to your home screen can be a helpful visual reminder throughout the day. Lastly, as part of the daily review, I recommend doing a quick desk tidy up. Nothing major, just putting things back to where they belong. This small habit can keep your workspace organized and prevents the need for major decluttering sessions. Now that you've seen everything the GTD Notion system has to offer, it's time to move in and start getting things done. Surprise! You've already been engaging with the system for a while now. The engage step is about choosing the right task at the right time using the lists and databases that we already set up and taking action. We've covered a lot of this during our daily and weekly reviews, highlighting just how crucial reflection is, the keystone of our system. Here are a few additional principles I like to follow to stay on track. 
First, life is unpredictable, so when planning, I always build in buffer time. I mark inflexible time blocks one color and flexible ones another, so when things change, I can quickly adjust without stress. And on a similar note, another principle is balancing proactive work with reactive work. By leaving some blank space in your schedule, you can handle surprises without feeling overwhelmed. I also live by the WFH rule. It doesn't stand for working from home, but setting three goals each day, one for work, one for family, and one for health. If I hit all three, I know it's been a successful day. Lastly, keep your actions current. Mark tasks as in progress when you start and complete when you finish. Seeing a sea of green is motivating and sets the stage for a productive tomorrow. Now that you've explored the full scope of the GTD method and built a robust Notion system, remember, Notion is a powerful tool, but it's all about what works the best for you. I've created this system based on my experience and preferences but feel free to make it your own. Change colors, rearrange things, add new tags, whatever helps you stay organized and productive. The GTD method is not a tool to use occasionally. It's a lifestyle change. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the method and Notion template. Share your tips, suggestions, and questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.